Hello everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, 12pm in Australia and 1am in the UK. Good to see you Sniper Eka, how was your weekend? And good to see you as well Tamana. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And it's always great to see you in chat guys. Um, remember, if you've got any questions or anything you're not sure about, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me about whatever I'm working on or something you're working on, maybe. Um, if you just want to pop in and say hello, like these guys, that's always welcome. But if you just want to watch, then that's completely fine. And just before we jump into things, I'm just going to grab a quick drink. I'm a bit dehydrated. Not dehydrated because I'm hungover this time, but just because it's pretty warm here in Australia at the moment. You had a good weekend, buddy? That's good to hear. Uh, my weekend, it was okay. Yeah, it didn't get up to much. A pretty relaxed, laid back weekend. Yeah. Didn't watch a movie or anything. I just um, did a bit of reading and some sleeping and that was about it. It's the warm weather. The warm weather really makes me sort of groggy tired <laughs> and because um we've had a bit of a few, a few days of warm weather here it's uh, made me a bit groggy but i feel 100 percent on how i felt last week after the melbourne cup so that's an improvement <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad you had a good weekend um we might just jump straight into what we're doing instead of me going through the images one by one we're working on this section here with our mirror uh, and I'm uh, texturing up a table for underneath of it. That's what we're going to continue on with. Cool. So we're going to we're going to um, place a table under here so that our lamp isn't just floating in the air there like that because that looks a bit weird. So let's do that. Uh, last week we had um, UV map the table in uh, Unfold 3D, and I assigned assigned some plain colours to it so that we could take it into Substance Painter. I have taken it into Substance Painter and I've just assigned some uh, textures to it. So let's just have a look at this table really quick. So we have our cherry wood and again what I've done here is I've gone in and changed the color of the cherry wood slightly and I'm going to be doing that for each of these different assets just so they don't look like all identical like they've all come <laughs> they were all purchased at the same time because generally when you're buying furniture in a, in a building you're not going to get an exact color match on all the pieces of wood on all the different pieces of furniture. Uh, and I'm going to simulate that by just varying the color of the cherry wood just a little bit uh, just to give each piece of furniture more of a unique look really. So I've done that with this piece and I've, I've made it a slightly different color than the mirror. Not, not Nothing drastic. You don't want to go too nuts. Just, just a slight color change. Uh, and again I'm using smart masks to do all the masking simply because I need to get these pieces of furniture done quickly so that we can get our cinematic done before Christmas because we don't want to be doing it in the new year we want to move on to a new project so I'm going to I'm taking advantage of smart masks again they're a really fun, handy function in Substance Painter um, my only negative with using them is everybody uses them so everybody's assets tend to start looking the same you'll notice that in a lot of games I noticed that in the latest um, Assassin's Creed Origins they, they use Substance Painter because I, I can spot the textures and uh, everything starts to look the same so Andromeda was the same, Mass Effect Andromeda, they did the same thing. Mainly on the um, uh, the metal work for the, <laughs> I want to say costumes, but that's not what it is, but the, the, the things that the guys wear, you know, the, yeah, that thing. All the edge wear was the same and it's because they use these smart masks. But they're very handy and you can get the job done really quickly and that's what I've done here. So we've got smart masks. So I've just done some it's used, done some edging around the uh, chocolate wood for the drawers. Clothes, yeah. Were they clothes? What are they called though? You know, uh, space suits, those things. You know that they were wearing like armored space gear in a Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> sure, I'm over last weekend. Sniper's asking. I am. I am. Uh, just that because I don't work with that sort of thing every day in my job, I don't remember the names of them anymore. When I was working in games, it was fine, but because I, I think a bit differently working in ArchViz now, I don't really think about 
me- uh, armor and that sort of thing anymore, like get you doing games. So uh, my apologies for getting it wrong, <laughs> but I am I am completely over it. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a hundred percent compared to this time la- uh, last week. Uh, so yeah, if we just look at what I've done here I, again, I'm just um, using some of the built-in smart mask edgeware to do, to make the table look a bit old and I won't say ratty, but well loved. Let's call it that. Uh, and I'm still sticking to the same colour scheme though, so I'm still going to be using cherry wood, chocolate wood and gold because I want to keep that consistency throughout the entire level. I may mix it up on one or two pieces of furniture, but generally I don't want to do that. We don't want our level to look like a bit of a hodgepodge, so... Um, now what I want, I'm just going to finish off these handles here, so... And what I'm doing here is... Um, I used the smart mask, but it, the smart mask has removed all the gold from the actual pull part of the handle, and I don't really like that, so I've added a paint layer above my smart mask. And I've, I've knocked back the paint to about a, a mid, just below mid grey. So when I paint it in, it's not going to paint it in uh, with full strength. It's just going to paint it in part strength. And I'm going to paint in some of the golds back on that silver handle. So it looks like that it's been worn a little bit, but not as much as it has here. So I'm painting a little bit of gold back on the handle itself. Because that's the part of the table that people will have grabbed and so that's where you're going to get a lot of wearing on that ring. Uh, but I don't want it completely silver like you see here, which is what the smart mask has done. So that's why I'm painting a bit of gold back in again. Unless you're going to be pulling up like this with the camera, probably not necessary, but I may end up doing that in the cinematic at some stage, so we may as well fix it while we're here. Uh, this one looks okay. It's left a bit more gold on that one. And the same with this one. This one doesn't look too bad. Yeah. We'll say that's okay. We'll call this table done and we'll export the texture so we can bring it into Unreal. Let's just save it before we do that. And now for the texture sizes, I'm going to go uh, 2K on the cherry wood. I'm going to go 1K on the chocolate wood because there's not much of it. And I'm going to go 512 on the uh, brass. So we've got 512 for the brass. And the chocolate wood, we want 1024. That should be more than enough. Let's just make sure we save it in the correct folder. Uh, let me know too, guys, if the sound, if the music is too loud. I, I listened to one of my vods from last week, and I've knocked the music back just a little bit because I was just thinking it sounded a bit loud. So, but if it's still too loud, do let me know. Uh, this is the long table, I think. Yes. Let's export those. Let's jump into Unreal and import that into our models folder. And I have a separate folder here called uh, Interior, I believe. Yeah, where we're going to place all of our interior pieces of furniture in its own folder. It'll just make it easier for us to find later on if we need to change anything. And start with the actual table itself. Okay, let's just give uh, Unreal a minute to catch up here with the shader here. There we go, come on. You can do it. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's start with the uh, cherry wood texture and import them. So we want the base color, the metallic, the normal, and the rough nose. You notice I'm not importing all of these at the same time. That's because it's easier for me to uh, drag and drop if I do them bit by bit. I'll show you what I mean. If I just uh, import the ones I need for this shader, as opposed to importing them all at the same time, they're all selected and I can just drag them and drop them into the shader. It just makes it easier and quicker. 
that's just my workflow though it's you know up to you as to how you prefer to work I just find it easy to do it this way let's get rid of that plain color so we want to color the metallic the normal and the roughness and apply and save Again, I'm making a cinematic, guys. I would not suggest you um, have three separate textures from one object because you want to increase your draw calls. Make sure you condense it down to one. And I would also not suggest you break up your textures into separate maps like I have here, but use the template built into Substance Painter to save out for UE4 format, which will place everything in one texture. It'll just place it in the red, green, and blue, these three maps, so. Uh, apart from the normal map, the normal map still needs to be saved as a separate texture. And let's do the chocolate wood. Uh, I don't want the height. <laughs> we'll do select that. We want the roughness. And I just like to place them all in a nice straight row because it makes it easy for me to hook up then. But if I always place them in the same order, then I don't really have to think about what I'm doing while I'm hooking them up. Again, we're not going to be fully furnishing the uh, building, but we are just going to be adding like what they call, I'm calling them hero pieces of furniture. <laughs> Sniper Ricky says, I think UE 4.19 will come with texture combining in the engine for people that don't pack their textures. That would be good. Uh, I know that Epic have talked about it. I'm glad they're going to be adding it. It'll just make everyone's life a lot easier. Um, I have shown you how to do it now until they add that, but uh, it'll certainly make life much easier if they add that. The ability to pack your textures if you're using separate texture maps like we are for that table. Uh, and it just makes working like working between your 3D program and then uh, Substance Painter much easier if you have separate textures because dragging and dropping your textures onto the separate material maps is is an, an easier way to work as opposed to having everything in one texture map and then trying to assign textures to different parts of the model. Uh, the material IDs is what they're calling it and having material IDs is a really better, much better way to work makes your life much easier in Substance Painter. Uh, but it does increase draw call, so um, yeah, it's good that they're going to add something to actually combine all that back again. Uh, you, uh, Epic, that is. Epic Games. For Unreal. But if you're using Unity, Unity, I haven't used Unity personally myself, but it's going to be the same sort of thing. Um, you want to reduce your draw call, so you'd really want all your textures in one texture map and not in three separate ones like I have here. Uh, like I said though, until they actually add it into Unreal, you can um, render to texture in your 3D program and combine them all that way. But it's good to hear that they're going to be adding it, Sniper. Again, I'm not going to be updating. This project we will finish on 4.18. Uh, we started with 4.15 version of UE4. We're up to 4.18 now, uh, but I won't be updating again, apart from maybe a hotfix. If they release a hotfix, I'll update to that. But we will finish this project on 4.18 until, until we come back to do another project in UE4. But uh, we want to move on to do other stuff from UE4 after this project. <laughs> I've been doing this for so long. I want to move on to do something else. Not that I like, I love the engine and I love the tools. It's, it's and it, you know, it's a pleasure to work with, but um, because I sell my models online, I've got my customers and people messaging me constantly saying, oh, it's been ages since you've released a 3D model in your store. When, when are you going to release a new one? 
and uh, this has taken up all my time so that's why I need to get this one done so we can move on and I can create something else for my stores so but I'd happily keep working in UE4 forever if I, if I didn't need to do other stuff because I do like the engine I always have alrighty let's um, pull this table in shall we now that it's textured up and it's huge but that's okay we can scale it back Back, 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 back. Let me just rotate it around so it's in the right position and then we can look at uh, the size, whether it uh, still needs to be reduced or not. And I'd say it probably does. And yes, I'd say it does. Just making sure that those legs are on the ground and they are. An easy way to get make sure that your things line up on floors and things is in your 3D program just to move the pivot to the base of the actual one of the legs, say, and that way you can snap it to the ground and you can make sure your things line up correctly that way. Let's scale this back a little bit. And let's make sure we're not actually in the wall. We have to make a decision to on these lights. Uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm using a shadow cast, which so it's actually throwing a shadow on the um, from these metal pieces that are on the base of the light, and I'm considering turning that off. I just don't know what your, what are your guys thoughts on that I just don't really like this really dark shadow it's throwing around so I may turn off um, shadow casting on that light mesh to get rid of this really even though it's physically accurate it's really a light fitting really wouldn't throw a shadow like that so um, yeah I think I may end up doing that removing uh, shadow casting from that asset I think what I may do here too is just go into unlit mode so I can see that wall a bit better behind the table. Just make sure I'm not inside my wall. That should be alright. Let's go back to lit mode. Yeah, the sniper's saying the shadow does look odd now that I mention it. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed it all along. I haven't said anything because uh, these sort of little bits and pieces I set, I tend to do when I do the final pass after I've placed you know most of my assets then I'll do a final pass and look for anything like this that looks a bit weird and uh, make adjustments then because yeah you, even though there are these metal pieces on the light the bands at the bottom and the top then that's what's throwing the shadow on a light fitting you're never really going to get a shadow being thrown like that not that strong anyway um, and the best way to fix it is to actually turn shadow casting off for that for that light fitting itself not for the light but for the light fitting I could turn the shadow casting off on the light but then it's going to start affecting it's not going to throw shadowing on any other asset and I don't want that I like the way it throws shadows on other parts of the model or of the building but I just don't want it to throw uh, shadow on that actual light fitting itself so if I turn the shadow casting off for that asset uh, then it'll, it'll only affect that asset and it won't affect the rest of the um, the look of the level. So yeah, just, just bear in mind you don't if you don't like the shadow that's being cast from your mesh, you can turn the shadow casting off on the mesh itself. So you still get your nice shadow casts all the way around uh, on everything else. So, alrighty. I'm just wondering whether I should maybe reduce the size of this lamp a little bit. I'm just going to pull back and have a bit of a look here. I may pull it back just a little bit. I may scale it down just a touch. You see how most of the lamp is actually in the table as well and that's not good. So, Well, not, not that it's not good, it's not accurate. So I think if we scale that lamp down a little bit. Uh, 
I think that's better. Now I'm going to pull the lamp back a little bit though too because it's sticking out a bit too far. Looks like it's ready to tumble off that table. Uh, and again we can see the um, the light being cast that casting that pattern from the actual shade. And that's done again with the light function inside of one of the lights. Uh, again, I've used two point lights here. We could use a spotlight as well, and I may actually revisit this once we've placed a bit more pieces of furniture in the level. Uh, so I, I may end up removing these two point lights and placing a spotlight shining down. We'll see how we go. And I think that the lamp being a bit smaller is a better fit for that um, mirror. Just want to make sure I'm not inside the mirror. No, I'm good. Okay. Again, I'm going to collapse all of this because Unreal loves to open it up on me and I don't want that. It makes it hard for me to, to see things if everything is up. If all the subfolders are opened up like that. Alrighty. Now I think um, a nice plant here, potted flowering plant, would look really cool. Again, it'll help to frame the mirror a bit as we move our camera through this part of the building. Uh, so I'm going to uh, place a potted flowering plant here and I think uh, some violets and a nice orchid would look really cool, so we're going to do that. Um, now it just so happens I have already flowering pot plants, here we go. Uh, I've already imported the actual mesh but I haven't done the um, shaders and I thought I'd do that on stream because to show you the best way to set up a shader for um, for any pot, any uh, organic thing like a potted plant or flowers or that type of thing. So let's just open up one of these shaders and have a look at it. So the shader itself, you want to make surface masked and two-sided foliage. Okay. You want to uh, add a color that you're going to pump into the subsurface color, and that's just going to that's going to simulate the light traveling through the flower petal in this case, or uh, it'll be a leaf petal, it'll be green. It'll just simulate the light color that passes through the object using this um, two-sided foliage shading model. The same with the opacity. I'm setting up an opacity with a multiply and pumping that into the opacity itself. That's different from an opacity mask, which we're going to be using for the actual leaves. Uh, the opacity again just simulate make, makes the leaf you know what opacity does i shouldn't need to explain it i guess but it yeah it just helps to simulate the thinness of the leaf for the light and uh, because i don't want to do all this uh, again and again and again for all these different uh, textures i'm going to copy them so i'm going to select everything that i want to copy of i'm also just using a, a standard constant parameter for the specular and the roughness and spec at one and roughness at 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So let's uh, copy these. Uh, I have done a couple of these. That one's already done, so we can move on. Okay, this one's not, so let's do this one. We're going to paste those in, move them over. I'm going to change the color here to better match the uh, color of the actual part of the plant that it's being applied to, so it's more of a yellow. We're going to make sure we change this to uh, masked and two-sided foliage. Make sure it's not yellow enough, let's make that more yellow. and pump that into the subsurface color. Yep. We've got our specular and our roughness. And our opacity. We'll apply it and we'll save it. And let's move on to the next one. This is good not just for stuff inside, but outside. Any foliage at all. Anything you're creating, uh, if you're creating foliage based on a mesh. You don't generally have to worry about it um, 
in if you're bringing stuff over from SpeedTree to use in Unreal because they create the shaders automatically for you when you import your object, your your asset. But if anything you're exporting on your own as a mesh from a 3D program that you're bringing into Unreal, you should set the shader up to be like this so you get nice um, light pass through the light passing through the actual geometry. Let's change this color back to a green. See that color green is not quite correct, so let's just make it a little brighter, I think. I'm, I'm just choosing the color here based on the texture that it's mimicking. I could actually go a little bit more yellow. Doesn't have to be exact, just a sort of similar color. And our opacity. Uh, let's apply it. And we'll save it. Uh, no, again, with these flowers, I've created them in such a way, I haven't. Um, uh, let's just explain what I'm doing with the flowers. If I jump into Max and show you the actual file that I use to create them, uh, this one here. Uh, when I created them, I created them the way I'm going to set them up in Unreal. But when I exported them, I've exported them as separate objects. So I have the violets as one object, the orchid as a separate object, uh, the dirt as a separate object, as well as this planter and this bowl. I'm going to be texturing these two up in Substance Painter. But by doing it this way, I can reuse these violets many times for different things. And I'm going to be reusing them when I place really large pots inside the building with uh, things like um, a fern trees and things. I'm going to place violets around the base. And uh, the same goes for the orchid. If I wanted to put the orchid in a different pot uh, or put more orchids together, having them as a separate object, I can reuse them. And even the planter, the same with the planter, having the dirt separate from the planter, I can reuse the um, this boxy looking bowl as a bowl as, instead of a planter itself, somewhere else in the level. So that's the reason that I break it all up and don't export it all as just one object. So I can reuse them again and again. Uh, and reuse them in such a way that you don't notice that they're being reused because if I'd added both of these plants together, and exported them as one object. Uh, I'm, I'm limited then as to how many how, how many different ways I can move and combine them to make them look different. So separating them up just allows you to reuse them without people noticing that you're reusing them. Okay, we saved that, didn't we? Uh, this one. So there is a method to my madness, guys. This, I, there is. Okay, that purple color looks good, so we'll stick with that. Uh, before we do that, though, we have to make sure we change our shader model here. Uh, again, no, you, you can, by all means, you can combine some of these textures together instead of having them all separate like I have to save on your draw calls. That's the textures, not the meshes. Combine the textures. It sort of comes down to a balancing act, even though having, um, by me doing this, we're going to have like one, two, three, four draw calls as opposed to one draw call if we exported it like that. The fact that we can reuse these assets, that is, that's going to save us some memory because the, the video card's not going to have to read in new assets every time. It can just, particularly if you're doing hardware instancing where you do it through uh, Blueprint, 
uh, it's you're saving a huge amount of um, uh, polygon memory that way. Let's change this one to a green. So yeah, it really really depends on the object and how you're going to use it in the level. Good. <laughs> I always like to check OBS to make sure I haven't muted my mic by mistake because I've done it before. And you guys didn't tell me either. Last time I muted my mic and was rabbiting on for a good five minutes before I noticed that uh, no one could hear what I was saying. <laughs> okay, I've already done this one, but this is a good example of using um, just of using the opacity mask and piping that into the opacity mask because we have a masked leaf which is just on a plane, and then this other one is just for the opacity itself. Peace and quiet. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, cheeky, cheeky people. But I've been told that. I'm a bit of a motor mouth. I wouldn't know what to do with myself if I wasn't talking. Constantly. <laughs> Let's make this one a yellow. Sort of uh, defeats the purpose of me having music in the background, doesn't it? If I keep uh, rabbiting on all the time, you can't hear the music. All you hear is me. Peace and quiet. You're so cheeky, sniper. Okay. Sniper says, uh, "LOL, you're you're good. Better, better chatty than just sitting there." Yeah, I agree. I, I've I've watched streamers because you know, apart from being a streamer, I like to watch other guys that stream as well. And the guys that just sit, even if they're not doing 3D work or artwork, that if they're playing a game, they just sit there and don't say anything. Is uh, really boring. I'm sorry if you're that sort of streamer and you're watching me, but it's really boring. As somebody watching a streamer, I don't want to watch you if you're just going to sit there and not say anything. Because what's the point? <laughs> you know, talk. If you're going to um, be streaming, talk. I'll make that a little bit lighter. That's why people watch streamers. They want to interact with, with you as a streamer. At least that's what I think anyway. So pay attention to your chat. And uh, make sure you talk during your stream. Uh, again, you guys know I, I, I frequent the Reddit, uh, Twitch Reddit thread quite a bit. And you always get people asking questions like, um, oh, they always advise you on that thread to make sure you're talking because that's what people come to Twitch to see. You've only got, only got like 10 seconds to grab someone's attention. And if they jump into your stream if they're looking through the different people streaming and they see you sitting there quiet as a mouse and not looking at your chat and not talking, they're likely to move on. I mean, that's probably, I, I wouldn't say that's blanket for everyone, but there may be some people that like streamers that are completely quiet, but generally not, not, not that I've found anyway. It's funny though, you see those people in, on the Twitch Reddit thread saying, but I have no viewers, how can I keep talking to no one? Well, you just got to pretend that you've got, you know, a hundred or a thousand people watching you. You don't pay, that's a, one of the reasons actually why I don't monitor my stream and my dashboard, like a lot of streamers do. Um, because I don't want to see if I've got no viewers that 
I'm talking to myself because that makes me feel subconscious then, so. No chance of that here, Phil. <laughs> no, that's right. No chance of that here on my stream. You're going to get an earful from me all the time. Unless I'm a bit hungover like I was last week, but even then I kept talking. So, <laughs> you can't stop me. Uh, roughness and opacity. But I can understand how they feel. It can, be, it can be weird talking to no one. But I've had lots of practice at that, so I'm used to talking to myself. No smart comments, guys. Uh, the soil I'm not going to do because it's soil and, you know, if soil is soil, it's not transparent or translucent. I saw that um, uh, Galen got affiliation, which is good to hear. I was reading his post on Twitter. So good for him. Now he's just got to keep streaming more. the right color green yeah yeah I, I noticed um because I, unlike a lot of you guys probably who live on twitter and facebook i don't have a facebook account and i never will he's a really nice guy sniper i agree he's a really really nice guy um but unlike uh yeah I, I don't live on twitter or facebook my twitter account i have uh, and i do catch up with it but only every few days i don't i'm not on it on my phone all the time like a lot of people are so I only caught up with the fact that he that he posted that he got affiliation this morning when I checked Twitter. <laughs> and I have to thank you as well, Sniper Echo, for that nice thing you said about me. Uh, a nice reply you when you I think you retweeted one of my going live streams and said that to check this guy out. So I appreciate that too, buddy. Every time you guys mention me or retweet or like one of my tweets, it always helps. So thank you for that. Specular. And I do see it all. Even if I don't reply, I do see it, so. And the fact that now you can tweet with, uh, what is it, it's 280 characters, I think? No more of this 140 character business. So now everybody on Twitter can be twice as opinionated as they were before. And it's got to be a good thing, right? Mr. Trump, I'm thinking of you. Alrighty. Uh, now we have the flowers brought in, but I haven't textured up the actual um, bowls for them yet. So let's just do a save all so we don't lose what we've done. And we're going to jump into Substance Painter. Yeah, 280 characters now. No more of this 140 character business on Twitter. You can You can double your tweets now. which will make a lot of people very happy, I'm sure. You can write an essay on twi Twitter now. <laughs> Not quite, but almost. It is good, I have to admit. Um, 140 characters sometimes can be difficult to say what you want in 140 characters. Uh, but I can see some negatives as well. Uh, now, where did I save this file? Is it under Potted Plants? Deco Planter Flowers, that's the one. Uh, Deco Planter, that's the one we want. Uh, now again, I've already taken this into Unfold 3D and UV'd it up, so you don't have to watch me mucking around in that program. Uh, I probably will be before the end of the stream because we're going to do other pieces of furniture, but let's start this by baking down the textures. And it's only one texture on this. And that will just give us our occlusion and our curvature map so that we can use smart masks. I'm going to rename this texture here because material 104404 is not very descriptive. Uh, and we're going to call this one um, Deco Planter, I think we're calling it. So we'll call the material Deco Planter as well. Actually, I'm going to. Um, Call it Deco Planter M for material. Oh, yeah. There we 
we go. All right, let's find a material for it. And uh, I think a nice silvery pewtery type color would look cool. Hey, Legmog, good to see you, buddy. Sorry, I didn't notice you popped into chat there. You're going to show me something. You'll let me know when you posted the link and I'll open up my um, my client there for the Phil Dust 3D server. It's a good time for me to mention for you guys again. Remember, if you um, want to post links in chat and you're not a subscriber to my channel, you have to post, you can't post links in Twitch chat unless you're a subscriber, but you can join the Phil Dust 3D server and type exclamation server in chat there and it'll give you an invite link to join my server. And you can go nuts and post links in uh, in the general chat on the Phil Dust 3D server if you want to show me any of your work because I love looking at the work you guys are doing. That's the whole reason I'm on chat. Uh, 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 the whole reason I'm on Twitch is to see what you guys are up to and to encourage you to do 3D. So please feel free to post any work you're doing that you want uh, me to look at at the end that you don't mind me showing on stream. Uh, if you if you feel a bit funny about having it shown on stream and then later on YouTube, because remember all my videos get uploaded to YouTube, you can uh, either whisper me on Twitch or message me on Twitter or email me uh, at, on my website at phildoes3d.com. So, and I can look at it all stream and, and correspond with you that way if you feel a bit self-conscious, which is understandable. Uh, you, you just pop it, let me know in chat leg mug when the link is up if you want me to look at anything and I'll uh, check it out. Okay. Alrighty, so we want a nice pewtery colour for this um, bowl, I think. What have we got here to play with? Uh, galvanized iron. We actually have a nice pewter here, so we might go with that. Let's drag that in. Uh, okay, this is one of those pewters where they've actually added scratches and stuff, which is not terrible on its own, but it looks a bit bit, bit too stark for this little bowl. Uh, let's see if we can um, change any of these parameters. See, I didn't make these substance materials, so I'm not sure what they've included as to how much you can actually adjust it. It just depends on the person that created it. And I have a feel, I think this pewter one is actually from um, Algorithmic themselves, so. It doesn't look like they've given us a lot of options here. Apart from a random seed value. Which is a shame. We can try reducing the uh, UV scale, or increasing it I should say to see if we can make it look less obvious, those scratches a bit less obvious. Uh, let's pull down on the height a little bit as well. Maybe pull back on the normal intensity a little bit. Uh, Legmog says, yeah, Phil, I thought I'd throw a little uh, medical animation research and development for a freelance gig you're working on. Uh, this specific video is uh, just research and development, so it's not the actual thing that, that I'll be, that'll be worked on for the client. But I'll be um, basing the real version of this off of, off of it. It's a sperm animation, but nothing that'll go against Twitch terms of service or strictly legit. It better be, it better be leg mob. 